Shove it, man! Shove it, squad. Something that has always bothered me is the Ring of the Hawk episode I made about Angelico in Lucha Underground. I was blown away by my first exposure to the show, but it always bothered me that the video had to end. Angelico got injured, but I wanted to know what happened to Son of Havoc, and more specifically, Ivelisse Velez. I was really impressed with her and wanted to see more. I think back in 2015 she was possibly the number one women's wrestler in this Hawk's opinion. Her run continued after Angelico got injured and left the show. She had around 38 matches in Lucha Underground, but we've seen pretty much the first half in the Angelico video. There's no point in me doing that again. We left off last time with Ivelisse and Havoc losing their trios championship, so let's find out what she got up to after that. And of course... If you know a wrestler that can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, HA HA! Shove their name in the comments, Jack! Okay, Ivelisse Velez, it's been good so far, but will she shit the beds? Match 1, 12 person mixed tag. Rey Mysterio Jr, Prince Puma, Son of Havoc, Willie Mac, Sexy Star and Tejano versus Phoenix, Ivelisse, King Cuerno, Tyre, Johnny Mundo and <sighs> Chavo Guerrero. Ugh, God, please no, why does this have to happen on the very first match I watch? Right, that's it, turn the video off, we're not making it. Wait, a small man in a wheelchair wheels up behind him. He thanks Chavo for looking after him. This is Pentagon Jr. Suddenly he gets out of his chair and beats the crap out of Chavo, so it's getting slightly better. Everyone's just watching on as Pentagon snaps Chavo's arm back. It gets even better when I learn that Pentagon's taken Chavo's place in the match. Well, I should say that Dario Cueda asked the crowd if they want Pentagon to replace Chavo in the match. The whole crowd cheer. I love the Lucha Underground product so much. It's like they knew exactly what I was thinking. The bell finally rings, but Velez won't be starting this match. Tyra eventually tags Ivelisse in on the head and she'll face off against her former partner in both ways. Havoc tries a drop kick but Velez holds onto the ropes. She kicks him in the chest but misses her second roundhouse kick and almost gets rolled up. Ivelisse immediately small packages him as both wrestlers seem to be even. Ivelisse starts yelling at her partners with her arms outstretched so Pentagon tags it. She's not happy but it's too bad. Our girl isn't really much of a factor in this match, she's in there with a lot of main characters in Lucha Underground. Maybe she can sneak a win while they're distracted with each other. Everyone's diving to the outside, so Ivelisse perches on the top rope and hits a huge crossbody to the outside. We probably won't see her again for a while. Havoc also dives to the outside, but he doesn't hit Ivelisse, she just sort of falls over behind him. Mundo wins with a Spanish fly on Prince Puma. Well, if anyone was going to steal anything from the twins in NWA TNA, he chose the right thing to steal. He can't exactly steal their characters, because they don't have one. I don't really have much to grade her bar a brief exchange with Son of Havoc and a dive to the outside. We'll give her a C, but I really wasn't expecting anything here. I always start these things out in a good mood, let's hope it don't go downhill, there's no need to squeal. Match 2, 6 way elimination tag for the number 1 contendership for the Lucha Underground title. Nobody gets an entrance, but that seems to be because this match takes up an entire Lucha Underground episode, so I guess there wasn't time. It's King Cueno vs Ivelisse Velez vs Tyre vs Pentagon Jr vs Phoenix vs Johnny Mundo. Velez starts off against King Cueno, but she falls to the floor. He pulls her up and shoves her against the ropes. She dodges his attack and sends him out of the ring. Ivelisse is left alone in the ring with Tyre and Mundo. She gets a Tyre slap and then Mundo takes her down by her hair. Mundo hits her with the moonlight drive, but she kicks out the pin. Tyre hits her with a spin out Uranagi and Mundo tries to claim the pin, but she somehow kicks out again. Phoenix appears in the ring, so she's safe for now. Ivelisse isn't done yet though, and she kicks Phoenix and Cuerno as they're facing off. She charges at them, but they body press her and launch her out of the ring. Damn, she smashes into everyone. Mil Mertuez, who isn't actually in the match, comes out and he destroys Cuerno. Johnny Mundo then eliminates him for the match with the Starship Pain. Everyone starts brawling, but Velez is ignored. She attacks Tyre from behind as the crowd chant her name. Phoenix seems hesitant to fight her, even though she's booting him. He still refuses to hit her, so she chops him and kicks him in the head with a flexible kick. She snaps off her head scissors now. Pentagon's now here, but she takes him out of a springboard crossbody. He gets straight back up, so she kicks him in the head. The two ladies in this match seem like they're about to square off, but Mundo's waiting on the outside and he kicks Ivelisse. Tyra and Mundo now team up, but Ivelisse still has fight left and she kicks Tyra in the corner. She follows up with a diving Huracurano on Mundo. Ivelisse is really up for this one as she beats on Tyre. Tyre charges at her, but she gets her head kicked off. It's just a two for Ivelisse. Tyre turns it around with a front slam. She heads up top and tries a moonsault, but Ivelisse dodges it. She can't capitalise and Tyre hits a nice northern lights. She doesn't make the pin yet because Tyre hits the double stomp. 
Now she makes the pin and Ivelisse is eliminated. This almost 40 minute match is eventually won by Pentagon after a Canadian destroyer and a packaged power driver. This match is easier to grade than the last one, the crowd were firmly behind her and she was able to hit a few more moves this time. She's really a great combination of sex appeal and legit fighting skills, so it's only fair that I give her a legit C. Match 3, Tag Match. Sexy Star teams up with Mariposa. These are tag team partners who don't get on. They take on Taya Valkyrie and Ivelisse Velez, the baddest bitch in the building, who are also partners who don't get on. Valkyrie will start this one for the team. Ivelisse tags her back after a while and she'll square off with Mariposa. First exposure to this woman for me. They chain wrestle with lots of arm offense. Mariposa has enough of that and backdrop suplexes her into the corner. Mariposa gives her a body slam and a running elbow, it's just a two. Then she tries a Celtic cross, which Ivelisse Velez reverses into a pinning attempt. It doesn't work and Mariposa clotheslines her. New submission for me now, I think they call it the condo clutch. Ivelisse doesn't tap and she sends Mariposa into the corner. Ivelisse quickly rolls her up for a two. Tyre makes the blind tag as Mariposa hits a Samoan drop to Ivelisse. You know... I hate it when some wrestlers use the Samoan drop. It should just be safe for Samoans and Fat Woman. And Mariposa is neither. Okay, okay, I just looked it up. Mariposa is actually cheerleader Melissa, aka Alyssa Flash. So that's something I didn't know. Later in the match, Ivy Lee hits a big crossbody block to the outside. After resting a large portion of the match, Ty Valkyrie gets desperate and she tags Ivy Lee in. She strikes Sexy Star several times, but she gets a drop toe hold and then almost loses to a Mahi Star cradle. Ivelisse returns the favour with a small package, but she can't put her away. They continue trading pinfalls until Ivelisse kicks her two opponents in the head. Ty Valkyrie suddenly charges into the ring and spears her own partner. Mariposa picks her up and hits the Celtic cross and Sexy Star makes the cover. Not a great one, this is D. Match 4, Ty Valkyrie vs Ivelisse Velez. Our girl's the clear crowd favourite here. Velez charges straight at Ty and pounds on her in the corner. She follows up with a dragon screw and then she slams Ty's face into the turnbuckle 10 times. Ivelisse takes women's wrestling back 10 years now as she hair drags Ty of Valkyrie across the ring. Velez tries to hit a kick off the ring apron now, but Ty catches her foot and she falls on the apron. Valkyrie beats her up around the ring and now slams her into a wall. Valkyrie tries to suplex her into some chairs, but she fights it off. Instead, she has to make do of a sort of DDT. Suddenly, Ivelisse Velez fires up and she throws Ty into the chairs. Ty of Valkyrie takes a seat whilst Ivelisse kicks her. They battle her around the ring with Ivelisse eventually climbing up a fence and going into the crowd. She hits a huge cross body block out of the crowd onto Ty of Valkyrie. It's suddenly turned around on the outside of the ring where Ty of Valkyrie slams Ivelisse into the commentary desk time and time again. They head up the steps where both girls take a tumble. I'm not sure who took the worst of that one. They then decide to get in the ring. Ty charges but misses and Ivelisse starts kicking her time and time again. Velez suddenly snaps off a released German suplex. Then she charges and hits a code red. She has her pinned but the lights go out. When they come back on, the very lovely Katrina is in the ring. She beats up Ivelisse and hits her with a voodoo drop. Then the lights go out and she has somehow teleported into the crowd. Ty hits a northern light suplex and a double stomp for the free. Really enjoyable match here. After the match, Katrina gives her the lick of death. If you didn't watch the Angelico video, these two have a long-standing feud and I guess it's carrying on. The best match for Ivelisse so far, it's a B. Match 5, Ivelisse Velez vs Mariposa with Marty the Moth. Someone on the YouTube comments keeps requesting this guy to get his own episode of Ring of the Hawk. I hear you, dude. I just can't remember your name. Mariposa with the first takedown by the waist, and Ivelisse looks a bit rattled. They have a test of strength, and Ivelisse steps up on the taller woman's leg to take her down and hit some arm drags. Next up, Ivelisse hits a monkey flip in the corner. She goes back to the kicks now, but she can't score the knockout as Marty the Moth grabs her leg and Mariposa takes her down. The bigger woman is really dominant now as Marty the Moth likes what he sees. Mariposa puts on that submission from before, but Ivelisse quickly makes the ropes. She gets choked across the rope several times and the moth tries to kiss her, but Ivelisse slaps him. Mariposa chokes her in the corner with her boot now and the moth also takes a turn choking. Out of nowhere, Ivelisse hits a big boot and a discus elbow. She springs off the ropes and nails a crossbody for a two. Ivelisse tries to climb on her back, but she's thrown overhead. There's lots of reversals now, ending with another Samir drop. I've already said it, I'm not saying it again. Mariposa looks to go for her finisher, a widow's peak by the looks of it, which Ivelisse wriggles out of. She runs and hits a code red for the free. The moth immediately attacks Ivelisse and the moth assists her sister with a splash. Not much of a match here, pretty basic as a D. Match 6, Marty the Moth Martinez with Mariposa versus Ivelisse Velez. Marty has a massive back. The crowd chant creepy bastard at him. Ivelisse tries to move quickly with strikes, but he seems to enjoy it if anything. 
Straight after that, the moth looks like he's going for a choke, but instead he gets an Ivalice arm drag. Ivalice desperately tries to hit a springboard crossbody, but she's caught, bitten, and slammed. With the ref distracted, Mariposa also bites Ivalice. Nice full Nelson submission now by Marty, but Ivalice elbows him and rolls through into a pin, but it's not enough. Ivalice takes him down again with a shining wizard. Marty clubs her in the back to slow her down. The moth starts bear hugging now and shunting her into the corner. Later on, Ivalice starts trying chop blocks and strikes to take him down. Velez charges at the moth, rolling up his body and she locks on a choke. The moth tries to fight it off by powering her into the corner, but she just won't let go. He eventually manages to get free and slams her to the floor. The moth continues the power game now with a full Nelson slam, and that's it for the free. Fair play to Ivelisse taking on a man twice her size, and it was pretty hard hitting, it's a C. After the match, Sammy Callahan debuts and saves her from a beatdown. He wants a hug, but he smells like sewage and she doesn't want to touch him. Match 7, 10 man tag. The Mac, Mariposa, Marty the Moth, Ivelisse and Sammy Callahan. I know this team makes zero sense. It's apparently because the owner likes forcing enemies to team together. And they take on Killshot, Arhenis, Dante Fox, Tejano and Brian Cage. That's a lot of talent on that team. The commentary team are now saying that Callahan is dating Ivelisse. She certainly has a strange taste in men. He tags her in and they show good teamwork as he throws her through the air and she hits a hurricanrana. Brian Cage doesn't care that she's a woman and floors her. She manages to slip out of a suplex attempt and tags out. We get the usual dive to the outside of the ring spot with everybody. This time Brian Cage catches Ivelisse. He's unable to slam her though because Callahan crashes into them with a suicide dive. Everyone's pretty much out on the floor now and Ivelisse climbs into the ring but she gets a kill shot knee to the face. Now the craziest spot of this video. She's thrown up in the air with a suplex and he tries to catch her with a power bomb, but she snaps off a hurricanrana. How was that not a free? She seems to have re-injured her knee. Marty the Moth gets a free after a fisherman's buster. Really enjoyed that, it's a B. I guess the knee injury is legit as she's not on the Lucha Underground program for another three months after this. Whilst Ivelisse is off TV, it's revealed that Sammy is in love with Katrina. Ivelisse didn't know that Sammy was in love with her, but he does admit it to her. Ivelisse tells him that she's coming for him next. She kicks him for a toilet door. This lavatory makes the SEX locker room look like a palace. Match 8, Katrina with Mil Matuez versus Ivelisse who sprints to the ring and starts spearing Katrina down. The crowd are very happy to see her back. Katrina takes her out of the ring and they trade chops. Ivelisse chops her so hard that her top comes off. Katrina throws her down and then locks herself in a nearby office. When the door finally opens, Katrina smashes Ivelisse over the head with a glass bottle. Katrina smashes a second one over her head. Then a third. Damn, Ivelisse is busted open. Now Katrina starts dragging the bloody Ivelisse up the steps and then she kisses her on the bloody face. This angers Velez who slams her head into the rail. Katrina gives chase across the arena and kicks her from the stairs. She gorms out for too long allowing Velez to kick her back. Ivelisse pounds her head into a chair and then they head to the ring. Our girl tries to run at her enemy now but she gets speared. Surprisingly, now Katrina hits a voodoo drop but Ivelisse kicks out. Katrina fetches her brick, well I know it's not a brick, it's a stone, but it has secret powers and she can't use it as she gets kicked and hit of a spine buster. That's just the two. Ivelisse has the brick now, but she gets punched in the gut. The two girls desperately fight over the brick with Ivelisse winning. She smacks Katrina in the head with it and hits a brutal DDT. This one's over, Ivelisse wins a very long running feud. The crowd are great and Ivelisse has the facial expressions and storytelling of a star. Unfortunately, she can't celebrate for long as Sammy Callahan jumps with a hammer to the leg. This was Katrina's only Lucha Underground match. She doesn't wrestle much since leaving the WWE. She's more of a character than a wrestler nowadays. I could watch these two fight for the rest of my life. Sex appeal, wrestling, hardcore spots. What more could you ask for? It's an A from this one. Yeah. Match 9. It's everybody's favourite, Joey Ryan versus Ivelisse, who now has red hair. He deposits his lolly in his knickers to start the match. Joey wants to feed his lollipop to her, so she slaps him. He throws her down to the mat. Now he rubs her face on his greasy chest hair. She retaliates with a chest hair drag. We get some actual wrestling moves now. Ivelisse hits a springboard arm drag and a head scissors. Ivelisse is then stopped with a straight up slap to the face. Joey gets three two counts, then he argues with the referee saying he got six. Ivelisse tries an octopus stretch for like a second, and she just lets go and then she throws him out the ring. What was the point? He makes it back into the ring and quickly kicks her while she's rushing at him. This match is really even. Now Ivelisse hits a rolling snap mirror and a kick to the face. She comes close to winning again with a step up into Guri kick, but it's still not enough. Joey Ryan has been on the receiving end a lot during this match, but now he manages to hit a spine buster for a two. Joey starts getting seedy again now and it costs him because Ivelisse starts kicking him and she hits a release German suplex. That's another two to her shot. Good match here. 
Joey tries a power bomb, but Ivelisse is able to fight off, and she hits the code red to win the match. Really nice woman versus man match here. It's a B. I can't go higher though because I miss her old haircut. Match 10, seven person battle royal. Dragon Az, Tekka Jr., King Cueno, Ivelisse, Desmond Xavier, Son of Havoc, Willie Mack, and Mil Matuez with Katrina. This is all leading to a Gift of the Gods title match. The winner of this battle royal can eliminate someone for the title match. Ivelisse is already on the ring apron, but she fights off Cueno, then gets eliminated by Mil Matuez as he body presses her straight away. Son of Havoc decides to eliminate himself by diving on all the wrestlers, so the Mac wins this one. A very pointless and short battle royal. Mac makes the decision to eliminate Mil Matuez from the match, and he isn't happy about it. He beats everyone up, so it's an S. Hell no! Hell match 11, no. six person tag. Ivelisse and Son of Havoc team up again after a long time away from each other, and they team up with the Mac versus Desmond Xavier, Azteca Jr., and King Cueno. The winning team here goes on to a triple threat for the Gift of the Gods title. Havoc tags in Ivelisse and she snaps off a head scissors on King Cuerno. Desmond grabs her from behind and she's able to send him out the ring too. She hits a scorpion kick on Azteca and hits a rope assisted arm drag. Velez tries to go to a submission background now but King Cuerno kicks her in the back of the head and Azteca slams her. Ivelisse starts to take a bad beating. She manages to come back after a while doing a rope assisted kip up and a step up in Zaguri. Velez manages to tag out the match. Despite her beating, seconds later she front flips off the ring open onto King Cuerno. The match ends when Son of Havoc misses a shooting star and he gets a Cuerno cradle shock. Not much to really say, she was barely involved, it's a D. I have to say, this runner sort of disappointed me. Once the storyline with Katrina was over, there's been no direction to her character. She's just kinda here kicking people. Probably doesn't help that Lucha Underground Season 4 isn't as good as the previous. To emphasise that point, here's the next match. Match 12, it's everybody's favourite, Joey Ryan and Jack Evans versus Exilicious and Ivelisse. Jack Evans and Ivy Lee start this one. Jack boots her straight in the gut, but it doesn't help him, and she gives him an STO. Jack tries to kick her from the floor now, but she catches his leg whilst he does a handstand. She stomps in his hand to stop that. Jack Evans is very athletic, but he still gets a head scissors. Joey Ryan gets the tag, but he's immediately arm dragged. XO has the tag, and Ivy Lee throws Ryan into his ass. Joey Ryan hates this at first, but then he begins to love it. He asks XO for a kiss. At this rate, the Hawk's gonna have to start narrating erotic novels. One fine day in California, a man who was everyone's favourite, Joey Ryan, found out that he enjoyed eating a- No, I'm not gonna do it. End of chapter, close the book. Exo does well before bringing Evie in. She absolutely floors Jack Evans and also gives him a scorpion kick. Jack stops her offence by backflipping over and hitting a trouble in paradise kick. These two work together really well. Evans brings in Joey Ryan, but he doesn't allow Ivelisse to tag out. He rubs her face into the map. Velez fires up from that and she hits a nice DDT on Ryan. Both of them tag out now. The match breaks down a bit with Ivelisse kicking Ryan in the head. She works well with her new partner but they're unable to get the free. Exo and Ivelisse start arguing about that which is bad timing because Ryan launches our girl onto the ring apron and kicks her away. Jack Evan wins when Exo Licious passes out. Man this is so disappointing, in the first video she was taking on Mil Matuez, she had real balls, now she's struggling with jobbers. Was it her injuries or her apparent backstage attitude that caused this? It's still a C from my work with Evans, but I'm being generous, trust me. She has a chance to turn it around still though. Match 13, Gift of the Gods title. The challenger, Ivelisse vs the champion, Azteca Jr. This match definitely has some potential. Ivelisse dodges a punch straight away and kicks him. She follows up the wheelbarrow into an arm drag followed by another of the springboard variety. Next up, Ivelisse dives from the top and hits a head scissors. Evie wants to dive to the outside, but she catches a kick for a two. The dragon is all over her now, and she looks like she's struggling. Azteca puts on a deep Boston Crab now, but strangely breaks the hold and goes to a chin lock. She fights that off, and she gets floored straight away. Azteca can't hit his leg drop, which gives Velez a chance. She kicks Azteca from the apron and then dives off the ropes to hit a DDT. It's just a two. Ivelisse tries a submission now, which hasn't worked for this entire video, and she gets a side slam because of it. Dragon hits a double springboard into an arm drag now. It kind of looked pointless, but sends the match out of the ring. He tries to dive on her, but misses and crashes into the stair rail. Ivelisse sees the opening and gets him in the ring. She hits the code red, but he kicks out. I think that's the first time anyone's kicked out of that in this video. Ivelisse hits a big spin kick now, but it's just another two. She can't follow up because she's rolling around on the floor sulking. She tries to put a submission on again, but she's thrown off. Dragon Azteca goes up to the top, but he stopped. He fights her back down, but she stops him again. He falls on the turnbuckle, nuts at first. She hits 10 punches, but once again, he eventually fights her off. Dragon Azteca Jr. hits a top rope leg drop to end it. The crowd wanted her to win. She did okay. 
Now, we all know the Hawk is not a judgmental guy, but the red hair has to go. El natural for the Hawk. I don't put no gravel on my worms, this a be. Ivelisse is busy throwing a tantrum after the match, but she's interrupted by Exalicious and Joey Ryan who want to form a trios team with her. I mean, it's a definite downgrade from Sana Havoc and Angelico, but she needs some sort of direction, so I'll take it. Match 14, trios title match, the new dream team of Exalicious, Ivelisse and Joey Ryan versus the champions, the Reptile Tribe. Daga, Cobra Moon and Callahan. He looks like he's seen better days. He looks fairly normal last time we saw him. Joey Ryan will start this out with Ivelisse's ex-boyfriend and he eats the lollipop. Anyway, the match trundles along okay, but Ivelisse isn't really involved in anything. Exo nails a stunner and she goes to make the tag to our girl. She slaps Daga multiple times and kicks him in the head. She quickly hits the code red, which is more appropriate with her red hair. It's the closest to a free ever, but Callahan apparently saves the pin. Now the two exes come face to face and Ivelisse kicks him in his face. Ivelisse drop kicks Dargo into the corner and then she tags Ryan. They work together to throw Dargo into the ass of Exalicious. Joey and Ivelisse hit a double super kick now, but they still can't get the free. Cobra Moon suddenly appears in the ring hitting a double drop kick. Everyone starts diving to the outside and Ivelisse hits a cannonball. Joey puts a lollipop into Callahan's mouth and then kicks him off the apron and he falls into everyone. Straight after that, Dargo gets a submission win on Joey Ryan. A tiny wrestler called the Bunny beats everyone up. I think this is Marco's stunt under a mask. Ivelisse tries to stop him, but Paul London is here and he also kicks her in the face and the Bunny kicks her too. This group of weirdos is called the Rabbit Tribe. They choke the new dream team across the ropes. So Ivelisse has gone from competing with Mil Matuez to this. It's not an S though, because that would be a bit too harsh, so it's a D. Match 15, Trio's title match. The new dream team versus the Rabbit Tribe. Paul London in a top hat and white face paint. Marco Stunt Jr. and... Wait, that's Karrion Cross. He's wearing some charity shop glasses, so I didn't notice him. Ivelisse squares up to him, but she gets taken out from behind. Paul London tries to power slam Ivelisse, but she wriggles out of it and gives him a couple of arm drags. Now she hits a third arm drag, spinning off the ropes. London seemed to enjoy that one. Ivelisse tags out and she has a look on her face like she's given up on Lucha Underground. I'm sure that's exactly how the viewers felt at this time. Later in the match, Ivelisse takes out all the rabbits on her own. She hits a double German suplex. Okay, that's kind of cool. She still has the crowd behind her despite a bad booking. They do that ass spot to Paul London and they give him a double super kick. Ivelisse is taken out by Marco Stunt Jr's kick. He also flies on top of Ivelisse on the outside of the ring. Cross puts on a white glove and gives Ryan a mandible claw for the pass out win. Joe Ryan seems to be the weak link of this team. Okay, I've had enough of this match. It sucks Sonny Siaki's oh no, ass, isn't it? Match 16, final match. Trio's title match. Freeway elimination match. The Dream Team have had to replace Joey Ryan with Sammy Kavara, so the Hawk gods seem to listen to me on this occasion. They also take on the Bloody Bunny Tribe and the champions, the Reptile Tribe. Carry and Cross challenges everyone to take him out, but nobody can manage it. Everyone is just down staring at him, watching him put his little glove on. Every single wrestler suddenly super kicks him at once. Everyone does the diving spot now. Exo dives through Ivelisse's legs and Sammy stares at her ass for a while before flipping over her. Ivelisse ends the dives with a cannonball. This match is pure chaos. It gets even madder now when Sammy hits a Spanish fly on Cobra Moon off a balcony onto everyone below. Almost every time I've seen Sammy in Lucha Underground, he's done something crazy. Maybe a future Ring of the Hawk competitor. Talking to Sammy, he does a reverse Huracurana to Paul London, which spikes him on his head, and this eliminates the bloody bunnies, thank God. So Sammy was definitely an upgrade to Joey Ryan. Unfortunately for Sammy, he gets assaulted by Karrion Cross with a mandible claw. He's coughing up blood. Ivelisse and Exo check on their partner who is presumably dead. They're left in a handicap situation. The Reptile Tribe attempt to triple team Ivelisse, but she dodges a punch and it hits Callahan, and then she STOs Cobra Moon. Ivelisse almost wins with a crucifix before she's thrown out of the ring. Velez won't give up as she hits a double crossbody from the top. She hits Callahan with a scorpion kick and a code red, but the pin is broken up. Ivelisse is then taken out and Exo is left on his own. He lasts about 20 seconds on his own before he taps out. Ivelisse desperately tried to break up the pin, but she couldn't. This was one of the better matches of this video, I give it a B. Less than a year after this, Ivelisse would start competing for AEW. I had to double check that, but that seems crazy to me. It feels like Lucha Underground ended years ago and AEW only just started. When you work hard, time flies like the Hawk. Anyway, all that's left to do is grade the second woman competitor on Ring of the Hawk Season 2. I think somewhere between a B and a C is fair in this run. I don't know if it felt quite good enough to get a B, which Angelico got. This wasn't top tier, but it was good. I mean, her character was better than Angelico, so you've got to factor that in. Her booking got weaker as it went on and she lost her edge. 
She was meant to be a badass, but then it just ended up being like she wanted to be loved with all these ex-boyfriends. Don't get me wrong, this was enjoyable, but it wasn't fully Angelico levels. I've at least the layers, your final grade on Ring of the Hawk Season 2 is a C. And get rid of that stupid red hair and you might get a B. And if you don't like it, shove it, you'll get a smack from me.